Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a problem from 1992 JE. This question has already stumped many people. Many students couldn't solve this problem that time and still uh, many students struggle to solve this problem properly. But the more important point is that people fail to appreciate what is going on. And this is because the concept is not exactly right. I have seen teachers explaining this problem in completely wrong way. They fail to explain why omega remains constant. If you see, so let me explain the problem here. There is a horizontal rod and the insect is falling and it hits the rod at this point. This rod is free to move in the vertical plane, hinged at O, middle point of the rod. Now, after hitting the rod, the insect starts moving towards the end of the rod, towards B, such that the omega remains constant. Omega, omega is constant here, right? constant angular velocity omega. How is this possible? That's the first question that many students struggle to understand. Because there is a torque, external torque, that if you see the weight of this bug is causing a torque here. So if this there is a torque present, then there should be an angular acceleration, but omega remains constant. We will try to understand that also. And I will try to give you some basic concepts uh, for angular momentum and also the torque that is related to angular momentum. I will solve this problem in two frames. Okay, In order to give you better understanding, we will solve this problem in lab frame and we'll solve also in the rotating frame. What is lab frame? Lab frame means the observer is sitting in the lab and watching all these things happening. And rotating frame means that observer is sitting on the rod and it is also rotating along with the rod. So that's the rotating frame. Okay. And we'll see why this is important and why this gives you tons of concepts here. Okay. But if you want to give it a try, then go ahead and try this and let me know how you solve this problem and if you understood it clearly. Let's solve the first thing. Okay. So if you see the bug is coming down with a constant velocity V. So the angular momentum because of the bug movement and when it hits the rod here, somewhere here will remain constant because there is no external torque here, right? Angular momentum is conserved. Okay. So what is the initial angular momentum because of the bug's velocity? That is M V times L by four because that distance is L by four, this distance, correct? And that should be equal to I omega. Once it comes here, it starts rotating with omega. What is I? I is nothing but ML square by 12 plus ML by 4 square, right? For the bug also. And that is equal to 7 by 48 ML square. So if you just solve this one and that will give and then don't we should not forget to add omega here. Okay. So that means omega is 12 by 7 V by L. Okay. This is simple enough. If you solve this one, you will get this. Okay. Now let's see a situation where this rod has turned through an angle let's say phi and at this moment let's say this distance is x okay now if you just draw the free body here there is a weight acting downwards mg and this whole thing is rotating with angular velocity omega right this is given so let's first solve this problem in lab frame okay now we know that torque is equal to dl by dt. I think this is clear to everyone. Now let's see what is the torque because of weight. Let's call this torque because of weight is mg into this distance, right? This distance. And what is this distance? This is x. So that distance is x cos Five. Okay. Now, what is the direction of the torque? So, torque direction is also like this. Okay. So, it is coming out of the paper, which means, let's say, if this is z direction. So, the torque is in z direction. Okay. This is the torque due to weight. Now, what is L? So, L is nothing but I omega. Okay. And 
I is the rod, okay, plus the bug. I because of bug m x square, you can say, because we have taken this distance as x. So m x square and omega. Now let's differentiate this one. So make let's say that dl by dt should be equal to d by dt of i plus mx square omega. Okay, we get i plus mx square d omega by dt plus two m x dx by dt omega and since this is zero it is given that omega is constant therefore dl by dt is 2m omega x dx by dt and if we equate this torque with this torque we will get mg x cos phi equal to 2m omega x dx by dt and therefore we can get rid of x here phi is nothing but omega t right because omega is constant so in t time uh, phi will be omega t therefore we get dx as g by 2 omega cos omega t dt so stick around we will explain why omega can be constant here okay that's the mood point that's the core point we wish to understand okay so x from where to where we know that bug hit the rod here l by 4 and then it is going from l by 4 to l by 2 okay so we'll say l by 4 to l by 2 and the question says the rod turns through an angle 90 degree so from 0 to pi by 2 so 0 to pi by 2 and we need to put omega right therefore we get L by 2 minus L by 4 equal to G by 2 omega and sine omega T by omega 0 to pi by 2 omega and therefore L by 4 equal to G by 2 omega square therefore omega is 2 G by L root under and what is omega so omega is 12 by 7 v by l so 12 by 7 v by l equal to 2 g by l therefore v equal to 7 by 12 2 g l okay Okay, now let's understand how omega can be constant when there is a torque available here. Consider this particular equation. Okay, we are writing that torque is dl by dt. Okay, and then dl by dt is nothing but d i omega by dt. And if you see here, i is i0 plus mx square. In this case, i0 is ml square by 12 but it doesn't matter because when we differentiate this it will become zero because i zero is constant so therefore you will notice that it doesn't matter whether this is a rod or a disc or any other shape because eventually what matters is where is the bug what is the distance of bug from the center and that's very interesting because this whole equation will not change for any other shape because as long as omega is constant di omega by dt will simply become omega di by dt and the constant part of i will be zero right here the moment of inertia is a function of x okay and if you see the torque this part torque due to weight is also a function of x and phi right so we can write x and phi therefore the 
increase in in mi moment of inertia which is ix is getting balanced by x and phi therefore if you want to draw uh, some rough graph here this is not for a scale but let's say we want to just understand this and we say that this is x and this is i x and this is tau x and phi and we take phi let's say constant here for the simplicity then as x is increasing the torque is also increasing okay so they are balancing each other out but of course it, these are not straight lines uh, for i see it is a parabolic curve and the torque depends on phi also and eventually when the phi is 90 degree the weight which is acting down will align with the line that is going through the center and hence the torque will become zero also okay but this is just for understanding that increase in moment of inertia is getting balanced by x and phi changes in x and phi okay so this is for just getting the sense for omega being constant even though there is an external torque available okay let's consider using rotating frame okay so what is rotating frame rotating frame is the frame when the observer is sitting on the rotating object itself so we are let's say the observer then we are sitting on the rod itself and in this case the fictitious force will act okay therefore there is a force called Coriolis force that will act okay and what is Coriolis force the Coriolis force is nothing but it is given by 2 m omega cross v where omega and v are vector and therefore if let's say we call it c force c then force c is perpendicular to omega and v okay now let's see how to derive this because this is good for understanding so let's see that so let's say that we are sitting on the rotating frame okay we are observing it from the rotating frame then the l for the bug is nothing but m x square omega right then let's differentiate this with time so we get 2 m x dx by dt omega plus mx square d omega by dt now let's observe one interesting part here if this is the rod okay and this is rotating like this the omega is in z direction okay let's say this is omega and the velocity of the bug is in this direction right let's say let's call this x direction this is v and this is let's say y then omega cross v will act using the thumb rule omega is in this direction and v is in this direction so omega cross v will act in the let's say this direction so this is the let's say coriolis force the negative is because always acts on the object which is moving in the direction of the movement so on the bug it will act in this direction but this will be balanced by the force in the opposite direction because the bug is moving linearly it is moving in the single line and that's something that we need to understand now see what happens we know that bug is moving from here to here in a single line this is the line right on the rotating frame if we are standing here then for us we are seeing that bug is taking this path which is true in the lab frame also but in lab frame this will be a curved path but here you will see that the bug is going straight in the straight line if let's say d omega by dt is not zero then that means that bug will not follow the straight path because there will be change in omega for the bug with the time so therefore either it will go off the rod in this side or in that side some things will change depending upon the d omega by dt but since the bug is going in the straight line in the rotating frame 
therefore d omega by dt has to be zero for the bug to remain in the single line so if suppose in the question if it was not given that the angular velocity is not constant let's say if this part was not given and if it is understood that bug is taking this straight path from here to here that is good enough to also assume that this velocity will remain constant but in reality this is not required as long as we know that the bug is taking the straight line so therefore we know that bug is taking the straight line so this has to be zero and here it is given also so therefore this will be equal to 2 m x omega dx by dt right in the rotating frame okay and this is nothing but 2 m omega v and x and since torque is force into distance so this is force into x and this is nothing but coriolis and therefore the coriolis force is 2m cross v okay so this force will act in the rotating frame so this we need to know and we need to really understand that coriolis force in fact any fictitious force acts in rotating frame only don't use that in the lab frame okay because lab frame they cancel each other because the force will act on the bug and then the opposite force will act so they cancel each other but on the rotating frame this will act okay so we need to consider this now if you just see the weight weight is still here and there is a force coriolis force here now since the bug is going in the single line so the fc is offsetting the weight so fc is offsetting the weight okay so now if you see fc is in this direction and we know that this is phi so this is also phi so fc should be equal to mg cos phi and fc is nothing but 2 m omega dx by dt equal to mg cos phi now if you see this equation is exactly same as this equation mg cos phi equal to 2 om omega dx by dt okay this and if you solve this equation we will get the exactly same result now let's also see it in different light let's say that we consider bug as an external entity and we just take the force which is being applied by the bug which is the weight so in that case the torque at zero here will be mg x cos phi minus because fc is in this direction 2 m omega dx by dt which is v times x right this is the torque and then since bug is an external entity and we are considering just the rod so this should be equal to d by dt of just the rod right where i0 is ml square by 12 which is constant therefore this is going to be zero and hence we will again get the same equation mg cos phi equal to 2 m omega dx by dt okay so the important point to understand here is that it doesn't matter whether we solve it from the lab frame or the rotating frame we'll get exactly the same answer but the treatment will be different and all the fictitious force the coriolis force especially here in this question will work only when we are in the rotating i hope you get some clarification on why omega can remain constant even though there is an external torque available and if you see many things are independent of actually the the, the moment of inertia of the object so I hope you enjoyed this session also and you learned few things. Please do subscribe and like the video and we'll be posting another problem which will provide you some deeper insights into the concepts of physics so that you score big in IITJ or other examination. Thank you very much. Subscribe and gain access to concepts and tips for doing better in IITJ or other examinations. Keep up the great work.